janefinch.com. All right, so it's your girl, Butterfly, here in the Jane and Finch Cinema Theater at Palisades. Uh, we're just wrapping up Ernie Panicoli's talk and also a documentary screening, The Other Side of Hip Hop, here in Jane and Finch. We're going to link up with uh, Mr. Ernie Panicoli, also known as Brother Ernie, uh, and ask him a few questions about his story, why he's here, and a little bit about his documentary. So I'm right now in Pal Palisades Media Arts Academy with Ernie Panicoli. How are you today? I'm good, sister. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you for joining us here in Jane and Finch. So what brings you here? I'm here to do a series of workshops and training of young people and some not so young people to make them understand what time it is. And like I say, I'm not a leader. I'm an alarm clock. And an alarm clock needs to wake you up. And when you wake up, what you do when you wake up is your business, but you first got to wake up. Like I said, you might be taking your daughter to the dentist. You might go to a dance class. You might go rob a bank. It doesn't matter. You might be going to church, but the alarm clock got to wake you up. And I think that too many of us are sleeping now. And it's my job to wake us up and make us understand that the time is crucial because they've got us under a situation called sleep technique where we don't even understand that we're slaves. We're slaves, but we don't understand. It's the first time in history that we have not known that we were slaves. Throughout history, every time there was slavery, people knew they were slaves. But now they got techno technologic and economic slavery, where people have to work two jobs just to pay basic rent and food, just to have transportation. That's a form of slavery. And the technological slavery is that you are connected electronically to something that you don't understand, that's following you and monitoring you, and, and in every single way trying to brainwash you and make you work against the natural workings of your brain. It's called CSDS, it's a deadly virus. It's common sense deficiency syndrome. Common sense deficiency syndrome, CSDS. So let's bring this back a little bit for our viewers. What's your connection with hip hop? I am hip hop. I'm the spirit of hip hop. I am hip hop, I'm, I'm, I'm hip hop itself. Hip hop meaning that it's the Hip is the hippest people in the world. Hop means we got the energy to move with it. But I'm the spirit of hip-hop. Hip-hop is the voice of the voiceless. And I'm the voice of the voiceless. And I've been for 35 years, 40 years, documenting hip-hop, documenting the pioneers, documenting the change, documenting the evolution and now the devolution, D-E-V-I-L-U-T-I-O-N, and D-E-V-O-L-U-T-I-O-N, devolution as opposite to evolution because it was influenced by the devil. And if you don't believe there is a devil, I will show you pictures of the devil. I will tell you who the devil is. The devil is the one of the 100 families that control seven people on this earth, seven billion people on this earth. And there's no way that they can do that without absolute technological mind control. And that's where hip hop has gone from a voice of the voiceless to being a tool of the oppressor. And I'm that voice against being hip hop being used as a tool of the oppressor. And how have you used your tool to um, educate and share your story? I've done 12 books. I've done lectures throughout the world, including the United Nations and Harvard. I've met with great leaders like the Dalai Lama, Africa Bambada, Kool Herc. I've used my camera as a tool of liberation to show us as natural human beings how we're supposed to look. I demystified the image of women, and I demystified the image of men, and I created a powerful image mindset, and that's how I've used my camera as a weapon against the devil. What would be something or a few things that people wouldn't know about you as a photographer, as an activist, as an artist? If they don't know, how would I know? That's a, that's a loopy question. What do they not know? That I'm a human being, I'm very sensitive, and that I cry, and that I feel pain and that I need love more than anyone. The more love you give, the more love you need. And also that beyond anything else, I'm a healer. And when I get calls and messages from people throughout you know, the native areas that tell me I'm no longer drinking, brother. I'm no longer using drugs. I'm no longer beating my wife. I'm no longer unemployed. Then I know that my message is resonating. And at the end of the day, unless you're feeding people, educating people, and giving them hope, it doesn't matter who you are or how much money you got, you're not relevant. You talked about at your lecture earlier today how hip hop is moved or where it is today. How can we bring hip hop back to its original roots? Hip hop was a voice of the voiceless 
What that means is that if we have lost our voice, somebody else is using their voice as a pretend copy of our voice. It's like I break into your house and I put my voice on your answering machine. Or I trick my voice into calling your friends and saying, hi, this is Butterfly, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that's not Butterfly. You're Butterfly. I'm not Butterfly. So hip-hop has been co-opted by the very same people that it was originally used against, which is our oppressor. And we need to get it back by first getting our minds right because hip-hop is a reflection of us. Our minds are not right, so our hip-hop is not right. When we start to respect our women, when we start to respect each other, when we start to be men and women again, then hip-hop will reflect that. Right now it's showing a bunch of parasitic, weak, feminized, lame lady boys that are supposed to be macho men. And we need to get that back, and the men need to stand up and be men again. The women need to stand up and be women again. This, ah, I'm not sure, you know, I don't know. You're a man, goddammit, stand up and be a man. You're a woman, stand up and be a woman. How could um, young people or even community educate themselves? Or what would be some of the things that, or books you would refer to? They came before Columbus by Dr. Ivan Van Sertima. Who Shot You by Myself, in which I have an essay which talks back in 2000 when I wrote it. It's about the coming colonization of hip-hop, and every word in there has come true, and it resonates today. Those are two books that you can read. You can read the autobiography of Malcolm X. There are many powerful books you can read. If you do nothing else, you can read the morning newspaper and find out what's going on, but learn how to read the newspaper. Don't just read uh, John Smith was killed by a bullet on 118th Street. No. Find out who John Smith was and why he was killed by that bullet and who had that bullet and who brought that bullet in, who brought that gun in. And that's how you read a paper. And when you read about the laws and find out how you're becoming a slave and de-slave yourself and free yourself because first you have to free your mind and your heart and then your body will follow. So everything that you read, even if you read a medical prescription and find out that that's poisonous to you or you read the food label and find out that the food that you're eating has poisons in it, poisons that if you were to go out and buy that food, uh, rather if you go out and buy the chemicals in that food, you would be arrested for terrorism because those foods are actually carcinogens and they're poisons, deadly poisons. Ca ca uh, decaffeinated coffee, it has embalming fluid. I could go on and on. So sometimes you don't have to read anything more than the, the, the soup label. You find out the sodium is like 80% of the product. Sodium causes high blood pressure. High blood pressure kills you. Come on. Read the labels and find out that the foods that are on there lead directly to hypertension and diabetes. And they're killing us. So if you want to be educated and liberated, just read the food labels, if nothing else. What message would you give to grassroots groups um, that are resisting or um, activists that are trying to find um, a place? Before you become an activist, and before you can be an activist, you have to first love your women. You have to first love your children. You have to first love yourself and love your people. And the rest evolves naturally. And you don't need to find a place because everywhere you are is a place. I don't have a place. Everywhere I go is a place. Everywhere I go, I bring that power with me. I bring that energy with me. I'm here now with you. I live 550 miles from here. This world, this earth that, that gave birth to me is my home, is my place of preaching. If you're waiting for a place or if you need a place to do it, then you're not really an activist. The activism has to take place in the world around you, not in a studio, not in a, a spot. You have to find that in your heart first. And once you find it in the heart, there's no force on this universe that can stop you. None. Um, any uh, last words uh, for the JanaFinch.com uh, viewers? Yes, love yourself. Learn to respect yourself. And if you want a good exercise, Watch one hour of music videos without the sound on and see how you're being tricked, co-opted, and your brain has been colonized. The decolonization process, self-decolonization, is the most urgent thing we can do on this earth as human beings. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. <laughs>